Good day, I'm Joe Kess, and I'm one of the lecturers on the Oceania ships that go to Japan and East Asia. I will be on several cruises, both in the spring and in the fall, and I hope to see you there. In the meantime, I thought I would give us a taste of Japan, literally. I'll talk about washoku for a few minutes, that is to say the Japanese culinary tradition, which is so unique that UNESCO thought it was worthy of being put on their list for Japanese cultural heritage, a world heritage set of culinary traditions. Now what is traditionally Japanese and what is typically Japanese aren't necessarily the same. I think more importantly what is typically Japanese is what we will be exposed to and that's what I'll talk about. There are items which are probably more traditional as for example nabe yori, that is to say hot pot dishes, staple winter foods in Japan. You may, as you look around Tokyo, find an oden vendor on the street selling oden, fish cakes, daikon, radish, eggs, all simmered in a savory soup stock. That may be a little more traditional, for example, than sukiyaki, which is really based on beef and vegetables being simmered together in a hot pot style. For the simple reason that there was no meat in Japan, traditionally. It was only after the Meiji Restoration in 1868 that Western style foods began to appear and the tradition of eating meat was established. Before that, for various reasons, especially Buddhist religious reasons, people did not eat meat, certainly not four-legged creatures. So things like sukiyaki based on beef and tonkatsu, pork cutlet based on pork, were simply not available in the traditional Japanese diet. It was only after the Meiji Restoration and the introduction of Western style culinary traditions that it began to be more popular. The Japanese, in their typical fashion, would adopt, adapt, refine, and make it their own in so many ways, just as they have with technology, they have with culinary versions as well. Tonkatsu is a very good example. Tonkatsu is really a pork cutlet. It's based on the French veal cutlet, which would have originally been fried in breadcrumbs. However, tonkatsu is fried in hot oil instead, and it's a breaded pork cutlet. Cutlet is what becomes katsu. They make substitutes, so finely chopped cabbage instead of the julienne-style carrots, and instead of the French demi-glaze, which would have accompanied the veal cutlet, you have a tangy Worcestershire sauce, which the Japanese will accompany tonkatsu with. What is Japanese is it really a question that's hard to answer because they have adopted and adapted in so many different culinary items. Kare raisu, curry rice. I think once you know that kare raisu is really curry rice, you think, well, that ultimately is Japanese. Not Japanese in its origin, it's Indian in its origin. But of course, the Japanese have adapted it to their own tastes, just as they have so many other foods. If you go to Yokohama, which is famous in Japan for its Chinatown, you will find Chinese restaurants aplenty. But those restaurants will not be anything like the ones you've tasted in China or even in North America. They're adapted to the Chinese, to the Japanese taste, rather. That's true for gyoza, which are Chinese dumplings, very popular in Japan. However, unlike the Chinese dumplings, which are typically boiled, the Japanese gyoza dumplings are fried, very thin wrappers, which have fried minced meat, vegetables, and cabbage wrapped in dough and then fried up and accompanied by a sesame style sauce, perhaps a little vinegar, some soy sauce, and a very delicious item, to my mind, far more delicious than any Jap Chinese pot sticker could possibly be. And it only became popular after the Second War. So although ultimately Chinese in origin, it's a long way from its origins in China, and typically Japanese. Ramen, ramen, which everyone knows. You can go to a typical supermarket and find a ramen bowl, and you'll find this in North America and North, North America and Europe as well. Thin, curly noodles served in a soy-flavored broth. You have toppings, scallions, uh, maybe a slice of pork, kamamoko fish cakes, and nori seaweed. That too is Chinese in origin, but of course the Japanese have made it their own. And they've made it their own in such an amazing way that there are actually three ramen restaurants in Japan that have a single Michelin star. Now, there are plenty of restaurants in Japan that have Michelin stars. In fact, there are a dozen plus restaurants that have three stars. 
but there are three ramen noodle restaurants that have a Michelin star. High praise indeed, as a matter of fact, for the humble ramen. Now, there are local varieties of ramen, so wherever you go, you'll find some small modifications. So there's Tokyo-style ramen, Sapporo-style ramen, Hakodate-style ramen. And you may want to taste these if you have a chance. If you don't, you can always go to Shin Yokohama. Yokohama, the city right next to, incorporated probably as part of Tokyo, where there's a Shin Yokohama Ramen Museum dedicated to ramen, as a matter of fact. A whole food court which is dedicated to the various branches of ramen that you will find from famous ramen restaurants from Japan, from Kyushu in the south all the way up to Hokkaido in the north. Now the thing about noodles is don't hold back because you can slurp these to your heart's content. It's not rude to slurp your noodles. And in fact, the more you slurp, the more you are showing your appreciation. And it is said that it enhances the flavor of the soup and the aroma, but certainly don't hold back if you're a slurper. This is your one chance to be able to indulge yourself. Now, as you leave the restaurant or you leave your hosts who have either taken you in for a meal at home or perhaps in a public place, a restaurant, there are three phrases that you may wish to be able to use and I'll offer these as my parting few words. The first of these is the beginning of the meal where you say, Itadakimasu, thank you. Literally, I receive, but really it means I am happy to have this meal, thank you very much. The second one is Oishi. Delicious. This is so delicious. Oishi. Thank you. It is delicious. And the last one is Gochiso Sama Deshita, which is literally, it was a fabulous meal. It was a fabulous meal, and I thank you for it. So thanks for the great meal. And that would be a parting gesture on your part, not only to the restaurant owner as you leave, but also to your host and you thank them for having provided you with this marvelous repast. Lastly, I will be on four cruises in Japan in April into May, Tokyo to Osaka and return, and then another long cruise from Los Angeles through Alaska and into Petropavlovsk and down into Japan in October of next year, 2022. And I hope to see you there. I'm hoping that we'll be able to share a meal and perhaps enjoy Japanese culinary tradition washoku together. Look forward to seeing you. Thanks very much. Joe Kess, lecturer on Oceania ships. <music>